We live in a world where data is being generated at an alarming rate and the correct analysis of this data at the correct time can be very useful. Now one of the most amazing framework to handle big data in real time and perform analysis is Apache Spark. And when a powerful technology like Spark is integrated with a human readable programming language like Python to give us a highly efficient API which is called PySpark, the possibilities are endless. Now to get started with this powerful framework, you need to know how to set up the environment of PySpark. So guys, I Kisle from Edureka will show you how to set up PySpark in your systems in this video. So let's have a quick look at the agenda of the session. I'll start off by explaining you guys the hardware and the software requirements for the installation process. And then we'll begin the process of PySpark installation. And then we'll run PySpark on the shell as well as Jupyter Notebook. So guys, looking at the system requirements. So guys, here I'll be explaining you the minimum system requirements. So the minimum RAM required is around 4 GB but is advised to use an 8 GB RAM system and minimum free disk space should be 25 GB, at least 25 GB. Now the minimum processor should be i3 or above to have a smooth programming experience. And most of all, the system should have a 64 bit operating system. And in case if you are using a virtual machine or the virtual box, and it should also support a 64 bit image of the operating system. Now these are all the hardware requirements. So coming at the software requirements, we need Java 8 or above. We need Hadoop 2.7 or above. As Spark runs on top of Hadoop, we need PIP with version 10. PIP is a package management system used to install and manage software packages written in Python. You can use Conda as well. And finally, we need the Jupyter Notebook. This step is optional, but the programming experience in Jupyter Notebook is far more better than the shell. So let's go ahead and see how we can install PySpark on our systems. So here I have a Windows system and in order to install PySpark, I'm using a virtual box and I'll create a virtual machine inside the virtual box because most of the time PySpark is being used in the Linux environment. So that's what I'm going to use. So let's see how we can install the virtual box. All you need to do is go to the official website of virtual box and on the download section, you'll find the latest version of virtual box. You need to click on the Windows host or Linux distribution. But if you have Linux, you don't need the virtual box. So for the Windows, you can click on this one and install. So I've already installed virtual box and I've created my VM. Now this VM has CentOS 7 as the base image. And now CentOS is Red Hat distribution operating system. So it also works on the Linux platform. Now firstly, what we need to do is check whether we have Hadoop or Java installed or not. So for that, we need to check the .bash rc file. Now the bash rc file contains the part to all the frameworks that are being used. So for example, as you can see, we have Hadoop installed in our system. We have all the part to the Hadoop. We have Java installed. So we can also check the Hadoop version which we are running. So as you can see, we have Hadoop 2.7.3. And to check the Java version, we need to type version we have java 8 running on the system so now that we have hadoop and java installed in our system we need to install spark to install spark we need to go to the apache official website and in that you need to go to spark.apache.org and slash downloads there you can select which version of spark you want the stable version so the latest version here is of june 8 2018 and it is pre-built for Apache Hadoop 2.7 and later versions. So as we saw earlier, we have Hadoop 2.7.3, so that's good. Now to download Apache Spark, you need to click on this link. And here you'll get various mirror sites and links from where you can download the tar file. So I've already downloaded it, so let me show you guys. So guys, as you can see here, it's a TGC file, which is a tar file. Now we need to extract this file and place it in our specific location where we want let me just close this first now for that first we need to go to downloads as you can see we have the spark 2.3.1 hadoop 2.7 tgz now we need to untar this file so we use 
So we use the command tar hyphen xvcf and spark 2.3.1 name. So what it'll do, it will extract it, or I'd rather say untar the file in the download section. So now if we look at the elements, list the elements, we can see we have spark 2.3.1, bin hadoop 2.7, and we have the tar file also. So what we need to do is move this to any specified location where we want our frameworks to be. So what I usually do is keep all my frameworks like Hadoop, Spark, Kafka, we have Flume or Cassandra in my user library section. So the USR, LIB, as you can see, I have Cassandra, Flume, Hive, Maven, Storm, and here I have copied Spark. So now that we have copied Spark to a specific location, we need to put in its path in the bash RC file as well. So let me again open the bash RC file. So guys, as you can see here, I've put in the path for Apache Spark. So there are two paths you need to configure here, which is Spark Home and the path. Spark Home has the path for where Spark has been shifted after it has been untarred or rather say extracted from the tar file and we need to also provide the path of the bin folder which resides inside the spark folder as well so after we have mentioned the path in the dot bash rc file we need to type in source and then dot bash rc so what happens is the moment when we add the path of a particular framework or any application in our bash rc file it is not saved so in order to save it, we use the command source dot bash RC. So now in order to move to spark, we just use CD and we use a dollar sign and we write spark home. We are inside spark. Now if we have a look at the elements inside spark, we find there's a Python folder. If we go inside Python, here you can see we have all the different libraries and the set of file which are used to run PySpark and there's a PySpark folder too. Inside here we have various libraries for which Python is being used and the various programs also. So now that you have installed Spark and mentioned its path in the bash RC file, now it's time to install Jupyter Notebook as well. So to install Jupyter Notebook, first we need to install pip or conda. As I mentioned earlier, pip it's a package management system and it's used to install and manage software packages. So this is the command to install pip. Now make sure that the pip version is 10 or above to install the Jupyter Notebook. Now in order to install Jupyter after we have installed pip, we can use the command pip install Jupyter. Now this will install the Jupyter Notebook in our system. And after it's been installed, if we need to use the Jupyter Notebook, we just type the Jupyter Notebook in our command line. And what it will do, it will open the Jupyter Notebook for us. So as you can see here in the news section, we have the Python 2. So we'll use this while writing programs for PySpark. Now one thing to keep in mind is that we have the Jupyter Notebook here and we have PySpark, but Jupyter and PySpark are not communicating in between. Now to make that happen, we need to again go to the bash rc file and once we have given the path for spark we need to provide the path for PySpark driver which is Jupyter notebook as well so one more important thing to note is if you are using spark for Scala you need to provide the path for Scala as well and for using Jupyter notebook all you need to do is put in these two lines of codes which is PySpark driver Python which is Jupyter and the driver Python options, which is notebook. Now that we have Spark installed, let's run Spark. For that, we need to go into the Spark home and inside that we use the command dot slash sbin slash start hyphen all dot sh. Now what it'll do, it will start the master and the worker, but if you want to start the master separately and the worker separately, you can use start hyphen master dot sh and start hyphen slave dot sh but generally i use start hyphen all dot sh as it starts both the master and the worker nodes okay 
So now to check whether Spark is running or not, we use the command JPS. As you can see here, we have master and worker running along with Hadoop's resource manager, name node, secondary name node, node manager, JPS, and the data node. Now, one more important thing is that after you have made changes to the dot bash RC file, again you need to go to the command line and type in source dot bash RC. That will save the path of the notebook as well as PySpark. So as you'll see here, the moment I type PySpark and press enter, PySpark starts running and I'm redirected to the Jupyter notebook. Now what happens is that this Jupyter notebook is communicating with the PySpark environment. So what we can do is go to Python 2, we'll create a new notebook and we can start writing our programs here as well. But it ultimately comes to your choice whether you want to do all the programming in shell or you want to continue doing it in the Jupyter notebook. Personally, I find Jupyter notebook easy to work with as you have various options here to cut, copy, insert, stop the kernel and much more. So let's see whether this workbook works or not. So here I'm creating an RDD, which are resilient distributed data sets, which are a key concept in PySpark. So as you can see, the star mark here shows us the process is being done in the background. And if I have a look at the RDD, which I just created, as you can see, PySpark shell is absolutely working fine. So as you can see here in the shell, here we have the notebook app open and it shows us some messages which are related to the notebook. As you can see, the last message is saving file at untitled.ipynb, which is the extension for a PySpark Jupyter notebook. So this is it guys. I hope you understood how to install PySpark in your system. What all are the dependencies required, the hardware and the software requirements. Now keep in mind that you can use the Jupyter extension. It's an optional step. If you want to do all the programming in the shell itself, then no need of the Jupyter. But yeah, Jupyter adds a certain level of sophistication to the programming. So guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!